Today, we're taking a look at a narrative that you need to know about before it's too late because this narrative is being utilized by your favorite RWA plays, AI plays, deep in plays, gaming plays, you name it. This narrative is involved. So we're going to give you all of the details you need to know before it is too late because I do see the next few months being very bullish for this specific narrative. Now, if you are new to the channel and it's your first time here, well, definitely subscribe. You're going to miss some great content if you don't. And of course, smash the like button, turn on post notifications so you get notified when a video drops. And if you want even more value, we currently have a free Discord. It may not be free forever, but for now it is free. There is a link in the description below. So the narrative we are talking about today is DEXs or decentralized exchanges. And as I said, all of your favorite crypto plays are most likely utilizing one of these DEXs whether or not you realize it. And I do believe that DEXs are going to continue being more and more popular in this coming bull market because as we all know, as people get involved into cryptocurrency, they are looking to exchange their USD to different coins and they can do this on centralized exchanges, but they can also do this on decentralized exchanges. So we have a massive list of different exchanges. I want to go through a few different ones today and I also want to point something out to you because each ecosystem or each blockchain is going to have its own native decentralized exchange and we can capitalize on both the DEX narrative as well as the chain narrative. So you can kind of combine your layer one chain or your layer two chain with the DEX narrative and you could realize some massive gains. Now to put things into perspective and to talk about base, which we've already talked before, but I want to highlight the narrative here and exactly how and what could play out. So if we take a look at base, well, as we know, over the last few weeks, base has been going absolutely crazy. Following the Denkun upgrade for Ethereum, we have seen gas fees on layer two be cut in about 90% and we have seen volume go crazy on layer twos and most specifically on base. Now, if we just take a look at the TVL, so the total value locked in the base ecosystem, we can see that when base launch back in August nothing really was happening you know it did get an influx in September and then it sat around 400 million dollars worth of TVL for the better part of four five six months and just in mid-March where we saw the Denkun upgrade happen well we saw an explosion of the base TVL going from about 400 million all the way to what it is now about 1.06 billion now, you may be asking yourself, well, Eric, why in the world are you talking about TVL inside of an ecosystem? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly why. And the reason for that is because we have the number one DEX on base, which is Aerodrome Finance, a ticker Aero. And this token in itself has gone parabolic over the time that base's ecosystem has seen an influx in capital. Now, if we take a look at the last seven days, I mean, Aerodrome is up 111%. If we take a look at the last month alone, this thing is up almost 1500%. And it was at one point because it did reach about $2 today, but now it has pulled back. So in the last 30 days, this thing is literally up 14x. And you can obviously understand that because the base ecosystem has seen its influx in volume coming into the ecosystem, well, you best believe that as people are coming into the ecosystem, they are willing to, you know, swap whatever token to whatever token. And what are they doing to do that? Well, they are using the native decks on base chain, which is Aerodrome. And that is why we saw Aerodrome's price go absolutely crazy. Now, of course, base also has other DEXs such as Uniswap. Uniswap is on basically every single chain, but Aerodrome here is the native DEX for the base layer. And that is one of the things I want to be looking at for this video because there are many DEXs on different ecosystems, but it is to find the native DEX in those ecosystems. So if we take a look at another ecosystem that is relatively new that has not seen its own bull market, we can talk about Injective. As we know, Injective did launch right around November of 2022. 
so there wasn't a real hype on Injective up until 2023 and 2024. We can see that, you know, Injective's TVL has grown quite substantially in 2024, going from about 17 million all the way to about 75, 80 million. Now, of course, if we compare that to base, it's absolutely night and day. We're talking about 1 billion versus not even 100 million. But I do want to know here that, you know, if you are bullish on Injective as an ecosystem, as a blockchain, well, you may want to look into what is the native decks on this blockchain. And in the case of Injective, we have Dojo Swap. We also have Helix here, but Dojo Swap is definitely the one that more people are talking about. And if we take a look at Dojo Swap over the last few weeks, it has done very, very well as the TVL on Injective was rising. So if we take a look at, you know, the last month or so, we can see that from the end of February to the beginning of March, we saw an influx in the price of Dojo Swap, which does also correlate with the TVL that we saw rising in Injective. So again, one is really correlated to the other. We can go from, you know, middle of February to the end of February, mid-March. We do see an influx in TVL going from about 40 million all the way to that 80 million. So about a 2x in TVL. And we also see that during that time, Dojo Swamp had a nice influx in price appreciation. So again, Injective, Dojo Swap, put those on your watch list. And if we move on and talk about another blockchain, which has itself seen a very nice move over the last few weeks, we can talk about Velodrome Finance or ticker Velo, and this is on the Optimism blockchain. So again, Optimism, a layer two. We also know that Coinbase is using the OP stack, but all that said is we saw that over the last, you know, month or so, we have a Velodrome that is up about 300%. And you may be asking yourself why that is. Well, if we take a look at the Optimism TVL, we definitely do see another influx in TVL. So you go look at Optimism, we're right around $1 billion worth of TVL. And, you know, from 2023, from later parts of 2023, when it was around 600 million, it did go to a peak of about 900 million in 2024. It dipped down early in the year, but from February, it did go from 760 million all the way to a peak of about 1.06 billion. So from that time again, we do see what we see the native decks of optimism do very well and that again is a point blank relationship in my honest opinion i do see that as we see more tvl in a specific blockchain that native dex is going to do well so if we move on and talk about an even bigger blockchain well we can talk about solana i know most of you are bullish on this one i am as well and if we take a look at solana's tvl it's sitting at 4.5 billion and if we take a look at what happened in 2021, well, we see a peak just shy of $10 billion. Now, if we fast forward in time, we talk about the bear market. We don't want to talk about that because it's absolutely boring. But come 2024, what do we see? We do see a nice influx in TVL going from about, you know, $1.4 billion in early January all the way to $4.5 billion as we saw now. So if you go on to DeFi Llama, you can then scroll down and what do you see you see the top projects that are on you know solana and you can go ahead and try and find the decks that is relative to solana so in this case we have radium we also have jupiter which recently airdropped and we also have orca which is another dex but ultimately you do see that the tvl in radium is the biggest one so we do have about 600 million dollars in radium and if we take a look at that one there well we do see again some nice price appreciation over the last month you're going to say, well, wow, it's up 110%. And again, if we do the same exercise over the last month, what do we see for the TVL of Solana? Well, we see another big growth on the TVL of Solana. So if I can zoom in for you guys, it's not working here. My mouse is iffy, but oh, not the right way. Let me go down here. So as we can see over the last month, if we really zoom in, you know, from the beginning of March, we have a TVL on Solana of about 2.5 billion. By the end of March, we are at a 2x almost in TVL. 
And what do you see with Radium? Well, it's basically done a 2x as well. So that is, again, another great example. And if we take a look at Jupiter, well, Jupiter has seen a massive influx as well. We can see it did go from about 70 cents all the way to $1.30 over the month of February and March. So since it airdropped, it has been doing very well too. So on Solana, because it's such a big ecosystem, I would not be opposed to going the Jupiter route, the Radium route, or another DEX. But ultimately, I would be looking at the ones that are getting the most volume possible because those are the ones that more people are using. Now, moving on to another blockchain that I myself really, really like. We can talk about Avalanche. And the native DEX on AVAX is a Trader Joe. So we can see that over the last month, Trader Joe is up about 60%. If we take a look at, you know, a longer term graph, we do see that at one point in time, it was up about 3x, going from roughly 40 cents all the way to a dollar and 15. We can see that, you know, it has had a bit of a pullback just as the entire crypto space has. But if we take a look at AVAX, it is completely different than other, you know, narratives and ecosystems that we've talked about because most of these other blockchains have seen a big influx in volume on their chain. So if we take a look at Avalanche, well, back in 2021, we had, you know, a TVL of roughly $11.5 billion. And right now, the TVL on AVAX is just around $1.15 billion. So we do see that, you know, this curve is not going up as much as Solana's. Going back to Solana here, we do see a much bigger influx over, you know, 2024. And going back to AVAX, we don't see as big of an influx. It has gone from about 500 million from the low point of the bear market to about 1.15, which is roughly 82x in TVL. So, I still think we're going to see a massive influx in AVAX, especially with crypto gaming, especially with financial institutions, RWA as well. I think AVAX is very well positioned as an ecosystem and blockchain. So I am still expecting a big run on AVAX. So if we take a look at what has happened to Trader Joe back in 2021, as it was around in this bull market, well, we do see that Trader Joe was just shy or just around $4. It even went to $4.20. But right now, it's sitting at about $0.92. Cents. It has a market cap of roughly $330 million, So still relatively small for the size of AVAX. And I do believe that if we do get an influx in the TVL on AVAX, we're also going to see a nice appreciation on Trader Joe. But if we go back to DeFi Llama, as Avalanche is a much bigger ecosystem and blockchain than, let's say, Injective, well, we can see that there are going to be more than one DEX. But as you can see, Trader Joe is definitely the one that has the most TVL with 150 million. It is also a plus as it is available on other chains. But we also have a DEX like Pangolin and other DEXs as well. But again, if you are choosing a lower size DEX, it doesn't mean that it's going to do bad. It's probably going to do well, but there are a lot more risks because not everyone is going to go ahead and use a secondary DEX on a popular ecosystem. They're going to do a quick Google research and they're going to find a Trader Joe first rather than Pangolin. But again, if you want to have a little more risk to reward ratio, you could go for those smaller DEXs. Now, last but not least, I wanted to talk about Uniswap because as you guys all know, Uniswap is the big behemoth of all DEXs. And right now it's sitting at about $12.33, a market cap of $7.4 billion. Now, I just want to bring you guys back to 2021 because a lot has changed on Uniswap and in 2021 this alone went to about $42 per token and we can see that the market cap was roughly around 20 billion so that was in 2021 and I can only forecast that in this coming peak bull market we are going to see Uniswap be you know surpassing these numbers I can't see how it doesn't because we're going to have more volume more users and more people utilizing crypto in this coming bull market or at the peak of the bull market I should say so ultimately I do see these numbers being crushed and 
Back in 2021, the Uniswap token itself was basically only used for governance and you were speculating that people would just buy the Uniswap token to either hold its value or to participate in governance. But over the last few months, they've actually had a proposal which I talked about on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, you definitely should. And we saw Uniswap go up from about $7 all the way to $12 in a matter of a few hours. And that was following the release of a brand new proposal for the governance of Uniswap. So we talked about it here on Twitter. If I refresh your memory, this proposal was essentially a huge game changer for Uni token holders that have delegated and staked their Uni tokens into the governance of Uniswap because this was a proposal to upgrade the protocol such that its fee mechanism rewards Uni token holders that are staked in the Uni governance. So up to this point, people who were just holding the uni token weren't getting any rewards. They've just basically had a say in the governance of this project. And now since this passed on March 8th, the voting was closed on March 6th. It passed on March 8th. This is going to be implemented going forward. And this means that now Uniswap is actually going to have a better utility than it did in 2021. And again, in 2021, it went to $42, a market cap of $22 billion. So it just had a pure governance token. And now in 2024, I do see more people, more volume, more transactions. And it also has an actual utility where people can earn from holding that token and staking it into its governance. So I see Uniswap being absolutely dominant. And if we go and take a look at Uniswap, well, we can see its TVL is absolutely crazy compared to all other DEXs, which is obviously why Uniswap is the behemoth of behemoths. We have about $5.9 billion of TVL just in Uniswap alone. So we can see that back in 2021, you know, we had a massive peak around 9.2 billion in 2021, again in November, about $10 billion. And we can see that we are slowly but surely coming back up here with a TVL of about 6 billion. So again, I would be a betting man on a Uniswap similarly with you know other dexes but this one is definitely the bigger of all dexes so you can do this with any blockchain and ecosystem whether that's binance smart chain with PancakeSwap or Metis with NetSwap. You can go on to DeFi Llama, type in whichever ecosystem you want. For example, we've typed in Metis here. You look at the TVL. Well, we saw a big influx back, you know, in 2022. Nothing really has happened over the last few years. Then in 2024, we see the TVL go from about 30 million to 80 million or so. You scroll down. Well, you want to know what the DEX is on, you know, Metis. We go on here. We see that we have have what we have net swamp we talked about this one in early 2024 when there was a lot of hype on metis if the hype comes back the tvl comes back well you're definitely going to see net swamp have a nice field day once again because it already did do that back in early 2021 going from about you know six cents all the way to a dollar and fifty so we obviously saw some massive influx on NetSwap. People probably forgot about Metis. And right now, NetSwap is sitting around at 60 cents. So if you do see the narrative that it's going to come back to an L2 like Metis, well, it's kind of a no-brainer to get in on NetSwap and other similar plays. Now, if we go on to some upcoming L2s or other layer ones that are coming out, I can think of mode from the top of my head. You go on to that, you can see there's a TVL of about 150 million. So what do we do, Eric? We scroll down on the page. We try and find which is the DEX on mode. And keep in mind, mode isn't fully out yet. They still have a bunch of airdrops coming. So we have a Kim exchange, which does not have its own native token. It's sitting at a TVL of about 8 million. So then obviously for this, 
this one it's a little different because you could go and farm Kim to actually get an airdrop but this may be one of the leading dexes on mode when mode officially launches so again have a look at that now another ecosystem I'm thinking about that has had a lot of hype recently we can talk about blast as we see we have about 1.2 billion dollars worth of TVL on this do keep in mind that blast is not officially out but again what do we do we scroll down and we can go find the leading decks on a blast it would be thruster tvl of about 200 million so again if you are bullish on blast well you may want to look at some of the leading dexes on that blockchain but ultimately i think that this is going to be a very big narrative on top of that we can talk about perpetual dexes but that alone is a completely separate video if you guys want me to make that video let me know in the comment section below and to leave you guys off the last thing here if we take a look at the total tvl of DeFi. Well, as we can see, it is very similar to the total market cap of altcoins. The chart I always show you guys in my other videos, we have 2021, a TVL of about $182 billion. And right now we're sitting around 86 billion. So again, we are definitely far away from what it was in 2021. So I wanted to just highlight this narrative as I do believe there is going to be a lot of potential on specific chains and specific DEXs. If you were in my Discord, well, back in December as well as back in February, we did say that we were buying some Joe. Back then, Joe was around 40 cents. So we are basically up 2x on this investment. It's nothing crazy, but as I said, you know, I am bullish on AVAX. I'm bullish on Joe. I was talking about the discrepancy within AVAX and Joe, where AVAX was leading Joe, and I thought Joe was going to do very well catching up to AVAX. But ultimately, if you want to find out more plays that I'm doing, it is in my Discord. Like I said, it is completely free for now, but relatively soon, it may not be totally free. But with all that being said, that's the video today. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. Again, don't forget to join that Discord, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace.